Hi folks, welcome to the Transgender Chef. I am the Transgender Chef, Diana Clarion. The season that Christians call Lent is rapidly approaching. Ash Wednesday is going to be in about four days. And although I left religion over half a life ago, that season, that Lenten Easter season, still brings back memories for me. I grew up in a Roman Catholic Slovak household where the Easter season was a big deal and I have fond memories of my babka, my paternal grandmother, and the various things that she would do in observance of the season, many of them involving food. Now when I was young, this was a time before Vatican II, and Catholics would do this thing of abstaining from meat on Fridays, they still do during the Easter season. Fridays during Lent, no meat. Ash Wednesday, no meat. So during that time, we would have what I refer to as Friday food, uh, various meatless meals, you know, sometimes fish, sometimes vegetable dishes. One of my favorites was one called halushki which is a fried cabbage onion noodle arrangement that babka would serve with zapraska, which was something that started off as a gravy and ended up as a broth. Uh, meatless again, uh, served with drop dumplings, uh, known as galushka. And this is what I am going to be working on today. So, let's get started. The halushki involves head of cabbage. This one's about three pounds. About a pound of white egg noodles. Onions. I've got three rather large onions here. Uh, that should make it. Paprika, always paprika. This is about a half a cup to start. Yeah, I said to start. Two sticks of butter, yeah, half a pound. It works, trust me. Butter is not evil. Butter is good food. We're gonna need all this butter to fry all this cabbage. And then of course you've got salt and pepper to taste. Start off. We'll stick these noodles into a pot of boiling water. Remembering to keep track of all the little things as I open things. Okay, there we go. Yeah, it's over there. Grab the spoon. Always give noodles a turn. If you don't do that, they're going to end up forming some accretion in the pot and it's going to be all sorts of fun. While, excuse me while I throw this away, the package, by the way, on the noodles says cook them for 8 to 10 minutes. The noodles in this recipe are going to finish cooking in the halushki itself after they are boiled. So I'm going to run it about 7 minutes. Let me set my timer over there. Hello, timer. And we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we start, and it's going to make all sorts of wonderful music when, when things are ready. Now, yeah, <laughs> I'm all sorts of fun, aren't I? Okay, we will start with the onions over there. I'm going to do something interesting. I'm going to take the onion skins off of the onion and put them in a bowl for um, later use. Wondering what the hell am I going to do with onion skins? Yeah, that was another thing that Babka did. A lot of folks may remember coloring eggs with food coloring or those Paz uh, commercial products. 
No, no, no. When I was growing up, eggs were colored by boiling them with onion skins. And it gave you a wonderful, wonderful brown color. Uh, reminiscent of the brown eggs that you'll see for um, exorbitant price in uh, the grocery stores. Yeah, and by the way, those, those brown eggs in the grocery stores, the only difference between those and the white eggs is the colors. So don't worry about it. Okay. Two more onion skins. And we are almost ready, I think. Okay, time to cut some onions. Always, always, always use a sharp knife. Especially when you have no fine motor coordination as I do. Yeah. Okay, you go over here. And we are going to slice the bottom off of the onion. I'm going to slice the top. Yeah, there's some uh, there's some onion skin left on here. We're gonna take care of that. Always works that way. Hello, hey hey, look at this. It is working, kids. All right, all right, all right. Now, yeah, getting everything all over the place. That's the way. That's the way it works here in the Clarion Kitchen. going to slice the onion relatively thin but not too thin maybe about a quarter inch except for this end that I can't manipulate very easily I'm on you hey look at that You go in there. And while I pull my hair out of my face, it's time to cut another onion. What I think I'll do here is just cut this guy in half and almost lose him. Okay, let's do that. Ta-da! Yay, 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 yay. into the waiting bowl. Now comes the fun part. Yeah, it's called cutting the cabbage. Hello there. Now, you might want to pull one or two of the outer leaves off if, especially if you're uh, Cabbage has been sitting in the defrigator for most of three weeks, the way this one has. The, um, the outer leaves tend to dry a little bit. Let's get rid of those guys. Get that steel again. We're going to need some sharpness here. Yeah. All right. She's pretty well balanced. We just go 
Yeah. Yeah, we certainly do. Where we go, I have no idea. There you are. Look at that. Now, quarter this. And that core has got to go. Oh, we just... Slice along that core, set you aside. Repeat the process. Just get that core out of there. Because it's rather hard. Not all that easy to eat. Okay, time for a bowl. Like this. We will set that aside and we will begin the process of shredding la cabbage. Slice is about three quarter inch thick, something in that order. I'm not making coleslaw here. This is something else. Something else again. Stick you in a bowl like that. And we are going to go slice, 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 slice. Okay, that's half of it right there. See, it works. Going to hit the other half of the cabbage the same way. Now the core is a little more pronounced on this side. The cut wasn't quite all that even, but it will work. Got you. Slice, slice. sharp knife really comes in handy, I'll tell you. These cabbages can be quite dense. Get over here, you. Yay! Look at that. Almost there, kids. Almost there. Viola! Bowl of cabbage. The cabbage will go into a monstrously large stock pot. Believe me, you need the space. Yeah. Two sticks of butter. And let me see how handy this will be. Butter's in the pot. We're going to turn the heat to a reasonably low level. You don't want to burn this butter. That's uh, not the best thing in the world. Grab one of these guys. We're gonna need it. Ah, I see that the butter is beginning to melt. I'm not exactly sure if you can see this or not. I think 
like that. I'll even uh, cut it up a little bit. Get some more surface area going. That'll make it uh, melt a little faster. Definitely don't want that stuff smoking. <laughs> Not in here. Last thing I need is to set off the fire alarm in the middle of the show. Doesn't work too well. All right. It's coming up to temp. So let's uh, put the onions in there. Boof. Okay, get these guys stirring around a little bit. You want to soften them. You don't want to do any excessive browning. They're going to be cooking for a while anyway. You don't want them overcooked, or at least I don't. I like a little crunch in my food. Get to that later. Okay. How about up a little bit with the heat there? Maybe about seven and a half. Still getting used to this thing. I cooked my entire life with gas, and all of a sudden I end up with this electric range in the new apartment. It's uh, a matter of just getting the practice in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now we're definitely going to want to heat up because it's, uh, it's cabbage time. Tasty and yummy, right? Whap! 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 That all nice and mixed up here. We're going to slap a lid on this. Let it cook for a few minutes. Lid. Hot. See you in a bit. Hi again. Okay, cabbage has been cooking for a little while. Starting to get soft. So, you can see through all of this wonderful, wonderful stuff going on here. Let me turn the damn heat down. Time for the paprika. Boom. going to be rather nice and red by the time we get through with it. Some of you, if you are anything like I am, may want to throw a little extra paprika in there once you see what's going on. Oh, that looks okay. That yeah, looks fine. And yummy and tasty, let me tell you. Get some of these things out of the way here. And let me get a fork. I want to check the 
consistency here. Some people like to cook the crap out of their halushki. I'm not one of them. I say I like a little, um, little crunch. Stick you in there. Taste, 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 taste. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Noodle time. Remember those noodles? Here they go. And here is where they finish cooking. Let's get all this stirred nicely around. The noodles broken up because they decided to make a mess anyway. Those noodles are what to do. Shimmer a little bit. Just enough to heat those needle, needles. Hello. Get those heat those noodles through. There we go. Got it out. Okay, let's move things around a little bit. Okay, while the halushki is going through its final heating, start making the galushka. And uh, where did I put my spoon? Got the memory of an elephant. What's an elephant got to remember? This is really simple. It's a cup of flour, a teaspoon of baking powder, half teaspoon of salt, and please, please, don't omit the salt. You really don't want to omit the salt because you'll end up with a wheat porridge if you do. Okay, mix those dry ingredients. Here's the thing, when you're mixing dry ingredients like this, always do it before you start adding liquid. So if you don't do it that way, you're going to end up with unmanageable lumps. And you're going to want to cry. So, please, yeah, just do it that way. Gonna need that. Into that goes an egg. Egg dear she gone. Without the shell. Don't want the shell in there. Start mixing that up. To that, you're going to add water. There we are. Water. In the infamous direction, add water until you got the dough to the de desired consistency. How do you like that? Hey, I grew up in a Slovak household. What can I tell you? And Babka's recipes were always a little of this, some of that. Okay, now I added just a little, a little too much water. I've got more of a batter going in it than a dough. Nice thing about that, you can always add more flour. Yeah, sitting down over there. Stir, stir, mix, mix. Yeah, yeah, we're getting there. Uh, let's see, just a little bit more flour. Just a little, little, little bit.
hey, look at that. Yes. We have a nice galushka dough here. All ready to set aside. Yeah, there's a lot of setting aside that goes on with this uh, little set of recipes. Don't worry about it. Okay, now to the zaprashka. Now the zaprashka, as I say, is a simple affair. It starts off as a gravy. It ends up as a broth. It's basically butter, flour, water, um, sliced onion, and I like to throw in a little rosemary just to make it taste like something. Now, I never said that Slovak food was all that exciting. Um, okay, now I want the onion sliced rather thinly, so to do that I'm going to use a wonderful little tool called a mandoline. No, not that! This! This is a great little cutting implement here. A little blade, an adjustable table, and the best part is this little guy to keep you from slicing your fingers into whatever you're cutting. I am going to put this to about an eighth inch over my bowl. Onion goes there. Here, let me turn this around. Might work a little better that way. We have prongs. Let's go right into the onion. And finger over the top and we go Slice, 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 slice. Yeah, the other nice thing about these, it's quick. Now, the thing you want to watch, this blade is damn sharp. Keep your fingers the hell away from it. Okay, put that away. We've got now this nice, thinly sliced onion. We're going to carry that over to the stove. Okay. We're over here at the stove again. About three tablespoons of butter. Yeah, this is butter heavy. No problem, no problem, really. I think this is crazy. Wait till you see my chicken paprikash. Okay, let's kind of stir that around a little and who cares about the paprika on here it'll give this a a little extra flavor extra flavor is always a good thing Important, important, important. My cousin Kathy, if you are watching this, the thing to do when you are making sopraška is to be sure that you brown the butter. Otherwise it looks like diluted library paste. And that isn't the most appetizing thing in the world, really. It's not. Just a little bit to make sure we do brown that butter. Yeah, we'll do that first.
you want to brown the butter, but you don't want to burn it. You especially don't want to burn it in an apartment this small. The fire alarm will go eh, 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 and it will be very annoying. At least the entire building doesn't go eh, 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 eh. That would not be fun at all. Okay. Brown, 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 brown. It's taking a while. Yeah, we're getting there. All right. Into that. We are going to stick la onion, like so. Get them nicely softened. We can uh, keep the butter going while we're at that. Yeah, I know the onions are rather soft because they're so thin, but hey, you know, you want them to cook, you want them to release the wonderful onion flavor, all that onion goodness, all those wonderful sulfibrils. Not doing badly at all. Three tablespoons of flour. Yeah, the thing to remember: flour and butter are one to one. Makes it easier to remember what's going on. Stir that around and get the flour reasonably well browned. Again, as I say, you don't get that browning done, you're going to end up with diluted library paste. Please don't do that. start adding water slowly slowly please so I say you're essentially making a gravy to start things out just do it as you would that
nice little um, golden thing going this time. The Zabraska I grew up with was heavily, heavily, heavily brown. This isn't brown quite as much, but hey, it still works. Yeah, I've got this nice golden color going. Now I'll start adding water a little more rapidly. cook down a little. Here's where I throw in a little, a little rosemary, maybe half a half teaspoon or so. Crush it up nicely. And we reach the pepper and the salt. These are to taste. So don't go crazy when you see me adding pepper like that. Here in the Clarion household, pepper is a food group. Okay. Got a cup and a half of water so far.
taste test. Trying not to spill it all over myself. Remember that galushka dough I made a little while ago? Here's some of it on the plate. And with a knife, just cut little pieces of it into the zabrashka. And that is how the galushka cook. They float up the top. They are pretty much done. If you're making galushka for something else, like uh, chicken paprikash, you'll be boiling them in uh, plain water and then removing them to a, uh, a colander. Drain a little bit. But here, everything just cooks all together. Sort of like the way we had dinner served when I was growing up. <coughs> Babka would serve the soup in a bowl. Then, when we were finished eating the soup, pick up the bowl, pick up the spoons, serve the main course into the bowl, from which you just got through eating your soup. So that did wonderful things to the mashed potatoes, let me tell you. And, okay. And I, I, I have to admit, and I said it before, I will say it again. I'm eating memories here. Memories of growing up then and there. Memories of Babka. Um, she was a better parent to me than her son ever was. So, I said before that I walked away from religion a long time ago, maybe about 40 years. But I still hold the concept of an afterlife. That being the memories of us held by those who knew us. Let me tell you about God. You are in the highest heaven. Oh well.
Okay, we're pretty close to done here. Okay, we've done some cooking, now it's time to eat. Look at this. Isn't this beautiful? I tell you, nothing in the world like it. The, uh, mm. oh my. fried cabbage, the noodles, the onions, nutritious and delicious, loaded with vitamin C, and um, it's inexpensive. You can get um, cabbage quite cheaply, onions aren't that expensive. Oh my, and here This is a It's a little on the warm side. Mmm. Oh yeah. Oh my. The uh, the rosemary is my own addition. Uh, what I grew up with was uh, quite simple fare. Um, you know, the, uh, the flour and the butter and the water to make it a broth, the, uh, the dumplings, the kalushka, in with that, it takes me back, it takes me back a good 50 years. Now, the only reason I'm waiting is because this thing is very likely damned hot. See how it goes. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So this is what I call Friday food. Uh Lenten Fair, Ash Wednesday Fair, and a lot of memories. And uh Sylvia over here is probably going to think about uh, stealing some uh, stealing some halloumi. She loves cabbage. No, she's just being a she's just being an attention hound here. So this has been the transgender chef. I am the ch transgender chef, Diana Clarion. Thank you for watching. I'll be putting the uh, the recipes up on my cookbook, uh, declarian.fnordnet.net slash kitchen. I invite you all to take a look. Please consider subscribing. And until next time, bon appetit.